Okay, hello everyone and welcome. How is everyone doing today? On this lovely Sunday, July 3rd, 2016, I am Darkside Phil, and welcome to today's gameplay stream. Hope that you are pumped. Hope that you are excited. Hope that you are looking forward to today's stream. Uh, something that was four and a half months in the making. I shit you not, that's not even an exaggeration. I wish that I could say it was. But at this point, Street Fighter V has been released for four and a half months. It came out in mid-February 2016. And it came out bare bones without any of the features or any of the... Uh, how can I say it? Any of the full-fledged content that you would expect from a full $60 release. In fact, when the game released, it was incredibly bare bones. Only having an offline versus mode, an online mode that didn't even have lobbies yet. <laughs> Basically, it was an incredibly unfinished game. It had no, no, you know, formal real tutorials. It had no challenges. It was just there for the sake of saying, oh, here's a game that you can play in a tournament. And that was it. <clears throat> and in this day and age, let's be honest here, right? In this day and age... Things are a lot different. It's not 1995 anymore, where fighting games are set up in arcades, and you go to an arcade cabinet, and you plunk in your quarter, and you play a series of opponents in a competitive setting. You know, back in arcade times, maybe it would have been a passable experience to sell a game like Street Fighter V at launch with no content, right? <laughs> That's not the case anymore, right? And even then, even then, it has to be said... This game didn't even have an arcade mode. It didn't even have the the mode that would come with the arcade machines back in the day. So it didn't even have enough to say it's the same as the arcade machine from the 1990s. It was that bare bones when it was originally sold. All right. So obviously people were up in arms. People were disappointed. Why are we paying 60 bucks for a game that has far fewer features than most other full-fledged fighters that we buy today. Most notably, the two real franchises that people compared this game most to were Tekken and Mortal Kombat slash Injustice because both of those lines of games are made by NetherRealm, okay? Um, and people had absolutely valid points on that front. Why does Capcom think that they can sell a game with next to no features for the same price as full-fledged games? Makes no sense. So, you know, I could talk about this till I'm blue in the face. I've already covered it multiple times in my, the, the, my own review of Street Fighter V, in podcasts with Venomous Fat Man, and all kinds of stuff. I've covered this, <clears throat> you know, a million times, so I'm not going to go into detail about it again. But the bottom line is Capcom said, well, we'll make up for it. We will eventually include all of these modes that you would have expected to be in a, a retail game. Sorry that you didn't get it at launch or whatever, okay? <laughs> So, over the past few months, we've seen the release of several different modes. We saw training mode, challenge modes, right? Um, all these modes popping into the game. Online lobbies that actually work, finally, right? The online play is actually kind of passable. You can get matches at least at a decent pace, which you would expect, again, from a full $60 game. It took them a million years to get it out. So after almost half a year of the game being out, now you finally have almost a full-fledged fighting game. Surprise, surprise, right? Unfortunately for Capcom, it is looking like it's going to be too little too late. And if you haven't been checking up on the performance of this game or the sales numbers, um, not only did the game fail to sell a 2 million copies, which is like nothing compared to what the original Street Fighter 4 sold, so it's pathetic that it couldn't even, it couldn't even touch like, a fraction of what the original Street Fighter 4 sold, okay? But not only did they come in far below sales expectations <clears throat> of what they had hoped this would happen, this game has dramatically slowed down in sales. And what I mean by that is if you actually look at sales numbers, they have plummeted, meaning as of right now, no one is buying Street Fighter 5. It's done. The sales for this game are completely finished because the game had so much negative press, being that it was basically an unfinished game when it was sold at launch, that only the hardcorest of the hardcore players 
who wanted to play this game in a tournament setting ran out and bought it, right? And probably about a million very disappointed consumers who really liked Street Fighter 4 ran out and bought it and said, wow, this game sucks. It doesn't have any of the features that we expected. To make matters even worse, it's been revealed in the past couple of months, okay, that this game has the largest amount of input delay between when you push a button and when it actually happens in-game than any competitive fighting game sold, in, like, in the past 15 years. Eight frames of delay. It actually makes the game completely unplayable in certain ways. So, what a lot of people don't realize is that fighting games... Uh, can be played reactionary or they can be played in a predictable way Reactionary means you see something happen on the screen and you react to it. Oh, someone's jumping I react with a shoryuken an anti-air shoryuken Someone's doing a move. Oh, I know exactly what will counter that I'll either block and react to punish it or whatever or there's predictability predictability means you guess what your opponent's going to do so it's almost like kind of thinking ahead you accurately predict what they're going to do and then you I react to that ahead of time the game is almost unplayable in a reactionary way. There's certain setups in this game that you can't even avoid. They're unavoidable, unblockable setups. Once you get into them, you're done. You're going to take damage. And that is the signs of a very poorly designed fighting game. Sadly. Now, Capcom has talked about maybe decreasing uh, this amount. Okay. De decreasing this amount of uh, input lag. But right now, it's already built into the game. There's no way to avoid it. It's basically one of the worst fighting games ever made. And it's fu sad because it's not because of the characters. It's not because of the fundamental gameplay mechanics. It's basically because the people who designed the game are hacks. And that's sad. That really is sad to see one of my favorite fighting game franchises of all time. The one that I grew up with. The one that was quintessential. When you thought competitive fighter, you thought street fighter. It's actually one of the worst now. <clears throat> now, the sad part is, and I hate to say this... All of the fanboys, the Street Fighter hardcore stream monster competitive community fanboys who want to get internet famous after playing the game and making YouTube videos of it and streaming it, right? They're all kissing the game's ass. Apparently, there's record numbers of registrations at Evo for Street Fighter V, despite the fact it's the lowing seller Street Fighter in quite some time. So I got to shrug and be like, whatever. Um, but all of this is just kind of backstory to today. Alright, to today. Today, I'm going to be checking out the story mode of Street Fighter V. I don't know if it's going to be good. I don't know if it's going to be bad. Alright, we're going to see. We're going to see what happens firsthand here today. And by the way, after completing the story mode today, tomorrow night, I'm going to be working on a mini review of it. I'm going to let you know exactly what I think about the story mode of Street Fighter V. Whether I think it's good, it's bad, it's average, whatever. So, I'm going to give you my thoughts about it tomorrow night. On KO Gaming, where I put up that kind of edited style video, alright? <clears throat> so you can expect that tomorrow. <clears throat> alright, and I apologize, as you can hear, my freaking sinuses, as usual, are bothering me. They actually weren't bothering me that badly, but I had to turn on the air conditioner here in the office, and <clears throat> here they go again. <clears throat> alright. So anyway, everybody. Uh, what else is going on? Let me give you a little bit of information about what to expect in the next week from me because now I'm finally back at a full-time capacity and what I mean by that is not that I haven't been streaming every day, but that the past couple of days have been very different, okay? Very, very different than a normal schedule. I've been doing multiplayer with patrons for the past couple of days and I'm fully aware that if you're someone who watches my playthroughs, you might have been turned off. So I don't really care about Phil playing multiplayer with certain people or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so here's how it's going to go down, all right? Here's how it's going to go down. Today, the Street Fighter V story mode. I'll be uploading that to DSP Gaming today as well. So if you're wondering, gee, when is that going to go live if I can't watch the stream? That's going to be live today, all right? Tonight, I'm going to do the weekend preview. And following the week in preview, I'm going to work on patron stuff. There's a lot of patron stuff that I need to take care of. Now that the, the month has begun and all the initial pledges have processed, I need to get uh, messages out to patrons to start being able to get them their perks and such. So that's going to be, you know, tonight, my tonight, basically. All right? Tomorrow, <clears throat> Street Fighter V will continue. I'll be playing Balrog tomorrow, the boxer. 
One of my favorite characters of all time in the Street Fighter franchise. He was actually one of my main tournament level characters in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the game that I was competitive at and actually uh, either placed at or won multiple tournaments, including majors in. Using him, by the way. Um, so that'll be tomorrow. And of course, I liked Balrog in Vanilla Street Fighter 4 as well until they eventually nerfed him in later versions. But I had a lot of fun with Balrog in, in uh, the Street Fighter franchise. So I will definitely... <clears throat> I would definitely be able to uh, let you know what I think about him in Street Fighter V after trying him out tomorrow. I'll be doing his training mode. Uh, you know, I'll be going into his trials, do his little mini story mode, and then go online and do online gameplay. All right? So all of that. All of that tomorrow. Tomorrow night, as I've already told you, I'll be working on my thoughts. Um... On this story mode. We'll see how it goes today. Alright. And uh, and then we will see how, you know, give me my, my formal kind of mini review thoughts tomorrow night on KO Gaming. Tuesday, I'll be checking out Ibuki. The other DLC character that was released. So, like, same thing as with Balrog. Training mode. Her trials. Her story mode. Going online with her. That'll be on Tuesday. Okay. There you have it. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, I'm on the fence about it, Tuesday night, I want to see how I feel and everything, especially because my voice has been hoarse for the past week, um, but there's a strong possibility Leanna and I will be resuming our Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, uh, playthrough, Tuesday night, after a ridiculously epic bug that we got last week, involving a stupid crate of ice cream, I'm not kidding you, a crate of fucking ice cream that has nothing to do with the movie, Glitched out, would not allow us to continue in the game after playing a stage for like 40 minutes. We were at the end of the fucking stage and couldn't finish it. <clears throat> so, that will be uh, maybe Tuesday night. Alright, we'll see. It may be also Wednesday. We'll see. And then starting on Wednesday, it seems that overwhelmingly, uh, at least per a poll that I posted the other night on my Twitter account, people seem to want to see me do a playthrough of Resident Evil 5 Remastered. If you're not aware of this, Resident Evil 5 just this past week was re-released, a remastered version, uh, on modern consoles. And Resident Evil 5 is kind of a unique situation because it was a game that I, I hadn't played Resident Evil 4, okay? So I didn't have the background to really play Resident Evil 5 and understand the control scheme and everything of this third-person style Resident Evil gameplay. Uh, but it was actually at a time when I was getting big on YouTube. My Dark Side Phil channel was starting to take off, and I actually bought, <clears throat> I had bought a new camera. This is before I did, uh, you know, direct capture. I bought a new camera to start recording videos on YouTube, and I started recording Resident Evil 5 with one camera, then I switched to another camera, then halfway through the playthrough, I got, I basically ran out of time to play the game. I'll be honest with everyone. I ran out of time, and I wanted to get through it, like, quickly with the time that I had, so there were a few nights where I stayed up like 8 to 10 hours trying to get through this game. I was drunk and I was playing cooperatively over the internet with someone who had played the game already and knew how to beat it. And I didn't know anything about how to beat it. So I basically was kind of running around and following this guy trying to just beat the game. And I'll be honest with you. I don't even remember the freaking game. I don't remember half of it. I remember about the first half and that's it. I don't actually remember... Uh, much of the original Resident Evil 5 playthrough. Like, I remember there's supposed to be an epic fight with Jill and with Wesker and all this stuff at the end of the game, and I don't remember any of it. I don't. Because I was just, like, you know, half drunk for the playthrough. So, it may be interesting to see me go back and actually play this playthrough now legitimately with direct capture, actually concentrating and trying to get good at it uh, this week. And I think that's maybe what I'm going to focus on uh, for this week at least, as the ongoing playthrough starting around the middle of the week when I'm done with all my Street Fighter V coverage, okay? So, uh, yeah, that's what probably what it's gonna be, and then, you know, there's lots of other stuff to get to as well. I'm fully aware that there's other things that people want to see me do, so people have said, <clears throat> why don't you go back and do an, an Undertale genocide run? Why don't you go back and do... Uh, God of War 2 HD, which you've had for a million years and you never did, right? Now that we had all this, uh, this crazy, uh, 
this crazy new game coming out in the God of War series. We don't even know if it's God of War 4 or what it's going to be. Debut to E3, you know, who knows. Um, or there's a bunch of other suggestions that people have been throwing out there. And keep in mind, I just want to let everyone know. My focus this month is to finish Persona 3. By the end of this month, I want to finish Persona 3. So while I'm playing other stuff, okay, when I have nights that are free, I'm going to be balancing it with Persona 3. There may be days when I do entire streams of Persona 3. Because I want to get that done, because if you're not aware, I, I'm sure pretty much none of you know this, because almost no one checks my Patreon page regularly. Last night, I updated my Patreon page with the goal for July. Yeah, already I've updated it. I've never updated my Patreon this early. But the goal for July, if we hit a funding level for July on my Patreon, is the return of the Patron's Choice playthrough. Okay? So, <clears throat> if... We hit the funding goal this month. Patrons will be nominating and voting on the next playthrough that I'll be doing as a downtime style playthrough that I'm going to balance with other games at the start of the hardcore gaming season. And if you actually check on September, September is a light month this year, if you can believe it. There's not a lot of releases. I've been looking. There's maybe one, two, three, four releases that I think people will really want to see this September. So that being said, I'm going to need something to balance all that with. And I'm going to put it in the hands of the patrons to determine what that's going to be, okay? If we hit the funding goal for July. So I'm just letting you know way ahead of time, that's the deal. And that's why I want to finish Persona 3 by the end of this month. Because if I finish it by the end of this month, then I can focus on that new game rather than have this lingering game that I never finished, all right? Okay. Whew. So that was a lot to talk about in about 10 to 15 minutes, all right? And I am going to use a cough drop because, like I said, my voice already, I can feel a strain from this freaking air conditioner. Um, but I'm excited for what's coming, you know. I'm excited for this month. Next month, a lot of stuff is coming in August, actually. August is a very heavy release month for me. So, very quickly, I will go through the gratuitous plugs, and then we'll get started. The plugs will not be very long. Number one, thank you for watching my streams and watching my on-demand videos on YouTube. I can, I can now confirm for you June was an insanely great month uh, for my business. It was the second best month of the year by far. You know, May was the best because I had that, that home front, the revolution review that went viral and I made a ridiculous amount of money on that video. But June was outstanding as well. And I thought June was going to be slow because I had that week off there where I was doing stuff with my parents. It ended up being really good. So if I can keep this pattern up, things will be amazingly positive coming up in the future. All right. So. Thank you for a great June. If you want to see me continue to be able to do this full-time as my job, there's many things you can do to help, including following me on Twitter, as you can see right here, at they call me DSP. You can check out my review channel, <clears throat> where I put up all kinds of edited content called KO Gaming. There's the link right there to KO Gaming 1. You can obviously pledge to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. I just mentioned what the goal is for this month. The return of the Patreon's Choice playthrough. You also get personal perks. FYI, tonight, I will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, help, or helping, uh, contacting patrons from the month of June on how to receive their perks for this month, all right? Uh, you can check out my vlogging channel, The King of Hate Vlogs. You can check out the Amazon Associate link in the description of this very stream and or on-demand video on YouTube. If you already shop on Amazon.com and you live in the United States, click that link and then go shopping as usual. And I get a little bit of referral credit. It helps out the business for sure. And, of course, you can check out my girlfriend Leanna's business, The Black Current. It's right here on the screen, Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash The Black Current. Handmade glycerin soaps and wax tart melts. All right, that's it. Ladies and gents, let's get started with Street Fighter V. All right, thank you. Let's see what they've done with the story mode. Hopefully it doesn't suck. <laughs> I guess we'll find out firsthand. Here we go.